Hello and welcome to Red Tree Church's online service. We just wanted to say thank you so much for listening in today. And no matter where you are tuning in from, we love to stay connected with our online community, whether that's through our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, our Church Center app, or of course our podcast. And whether this is your first time listening or your hundredth time listening, we hope that you are encouraged and inspired by today's message. So let's take a listen. Father, we come this morning, Lord, we thank you for who you are. God, we thank you for being a loving, a loving God, a forgiving God. Lord, you are involved in our daily lives, and we have an opportunity to seek you. Many of us at times wander and drift, and we sin, and Lord, we we know that our lives are not where you want them to be. So I pray that before we go any further, God, that you would be honored and pleased in what we do. With every head bowed, every eyes closed, no one looking around. I think it's, I think it's easy to come into a Sunday morning experience, a Sunday morning gathering and to sing these songs of God, I'm not enough. And unless you come, you're all that I want. But then what about Tuesday or Friday? Or what about last weekend? Or what about that time where you just seemed like you just had to do what you had to do and no matter how hard you tried, you couldn't get away from it? But then when we gather, we know that this is an opportunity for the, you you don't have to be perfect. There's no perfect people allowed here. And we can come together and we can sing back to our heavenly father who will continue to forgive, who, who continues to offer grace who continues to extend mercy when none of us deserve it. And so when we sing songs, would you meet me here again? I think it's so easy to lose the lyrics because the vocals are so good, because the music sounds so well, but it's those lyrics that have an opportunity to change your life. It's those lyrics, it's those words who can connect you to your heavenly father in a way that maybe you've never been connected before. Or maybe in a way that you haven't been connected for in such a long time. And so before we go any further, if that is you and you need prayer, would you just lift your hand up real quick so I can be praying for you? Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being honest. Anybody else? Thank you. Lord, you see the hands. Lord, you know where we are. We can convince other people other things. We can fake it. We can try to do these other things and make people believe something that may not be true. But Lord, we are your children and you know us. And so Lord, this morning as we enter into this conversation, Lord, I pray that you'd help me to preach your truth. But Lord, you'd help me to preach your truth and love. And if there's someone here this morning and they do not have a relationship with you, Lord, I pray that you do only what you can do, and that is draw them to yourself. Nothing in which we can do will make that happen other than by your spirit. Lord, we love you. We thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. How's everybody doing? Red Tree. Yes, I love that song, man. The, the, the whole set, the whole set was amazing. Uh, I, I love our team. They continue to just constantly work and get better at things and just continue to improve. And it's such an awesome privilege to be a part of Red Tree, to have that worship team. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry you got to listen to me as the pastor. And so, but don't worry. Every now and then we'll bring in missionaries or guest speakers and it'll be okay, right? Uh, but man, we are excited about what God continues to do at Red Tree. And we're doing a series called Different. Because as Christ followers, you and I are to be different. I think it's one of the most um, uh, belittling, maybe not necessarily belittling, but it's one of the most ideas that's being left behind as far as like to be different, to look Christ-like. We've almost become an idea of you can follow Jesus and be whoever you want, however you want, act however you want. But anybody can follow Jesus, but it's already been written down how it is that we are supposed to follow him, right? Right? And so for us, we know that it is to live different. And so uh, three weeks ago, we started this series called Different. And Peter's writing back to a community of believers that have been persecuted. He's writing back to a group of people. They've seen their family members dipped in hot wax. And then they were tied to trees. And then they were lit on fire as if they were a candle to light up the night sky. 
He's writing to people that have had their family members thrown in a cage and then wild animals turned loose on them and they were devoured in front of them to watch and they could do nothing. And so he's writing to this group of people. They're tired, they're wore out. God didn't do what he said he was going to do or what they wanted him to do. And they're just not sure that following Jesus is worth it anymore. And I would bet to say there's some this morning, you're tired, you're wore out, and you've been praying, and you're just not really sure it's worth following Jesus anymore. You're just not sure it's worth taking that step to begin to follow Jesus. And I want to encourage you to lean into the scriptures, to lean into Jesus instead of to push away. Are you surrounded by people who encourage you to become a better Christ follower? Are you surrounded by people who want what's best for you according to what God wants for you, not your own desires? How many of you wind up seeking too much maybe self-gratification throughout the week? Anybody? Anybody at all? You're like, man, I just, I, I want this, I want it now, here's what I want to do, this and this, that way. And then you wind up going, I cannot believe I did that. Isn't it interesting the way that Satan works? He will convince you, it's not a big deal, don't worry about it, it's no big deal, everyone sins. And then when you cross that threshold, what does he do? I can't believe you did that. You call yourself a Christ follower. And all of a sudden you're like, wait, I, I, I thought, I thought, I thought. And so today when Peter writes, he writes to a group, they are wondering what in the world's going on. And he encourages them. I, I want us to look at first chapter, or first Peter chapter two, starting in verse nine. If you highlight your Bible, if you underline your Bible, this is a verse you need because this is a very encouraging and very powerful verse. And this is what Pete is trying to remind them, okay? So as we read this, try to, try to read it with that lens. It says this, but you are a chosen people. Everybody say chosen people. So far, better than first service. Good job, guys. Good job. All right. He says, but you are a chosen people. Then watch this. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. Now, some of y'all been like, oh, yeah, I know that I'm special, all right. Um, it, it's a special possession. God takes joy in you. Isn't that awesome to know that you have been set apart you, are a, you have royal priesthood. You are a chosen people of God if you call yourself a Christ follower. And then it goes on and it says this. Uh, it says, God's special possession that you may declare the praise of him who called you, watch this, out of darkness into his wonderful light. Just that verse alone, I mean, we, we could sit there and we could exegete that verse just by itself and break it down and talk about what it is and what it isn't and with the different things of what the, the original text means. But what Peter is saying in this is if you are a Christ follower, you are not defined by what you do. You are defined by whose you are, right? You, if you are a Christ follower, you belong to God. You are his sons, you are his daughters, I am his son. And it is not because of anything in what I do that deserves anything, but it is everything of what God does through me, amen? And so that's why years ago we decided we're gonna put back on that wall, give them Jesus. He is our only hope. He is the only thing that will change anybody's life. And that is what we strive to do is to tell people about who Jesus is. Uh, years ago, there was a study put out that many millennials and many younger generations of faith are walking away from the church. And, and, and maybe you know some of them, or maybe you're contemplating that. And, and, and what the study shows is people are not walking away from church because of, of what they believe. And they're not walking away from church because of the hypocrisy. They say they're walking away from church because the church doesn't believe what it says they believe. You see, that's a whole new conversation, isn't it? The church doesn't believe even what they say they believe. So therefore, I'm gonna exit out of this while I can. And some of you have many friends that are in that situation to where they're not really sure that you believe what you say that you wind up believing. Peter uses the words calling or called or to be called out in that verse there, verse 10 towards the end of it. He says this, you have been called out of darkness. This is something that we wind up getting tripped up on, is to be sucked or to be lured back into the darkness. My, my, my grandpa Bob shared an illustration with me years ago. 
And we were just talking about the state of the, the world and kind of how it's just shifting and different things don't matter. Like at one point, like you couldn't chew gum in school. And now you, like it's no big deal as long as you put gum in your own hair. You just can't put it in someone else's hair. Or you couldn't wear, you guys remember when you couldn't wear a hat in school? Anybody remember that? Like there's no hats in the school. And now it's like, you want to wear a hat? That's fine. You can wear a hat. Or if a teacher tells you you can't, you just say, yes, I can. And like, okay, I'm sorry, I didn't know that. And so it's like, the world, the world changes. Are, you, are any of you aware of this at all? No? Yeah. It, it, it's odd. It's, it's really odd. It's like, what in the world's going on? And so I feel so sorry for you teachers. Like, I don't know how y'all keep your jobs. Because for me, it'd be like, eh, Chad punched another high schooler. And so no, not going to go well for him. I, I, I really don't know how you guys do it. And so it would be really wise for us to pray for the teachers, right? Okay, yes. <laughs> teachers like you, please better do, right? But to be, to be in this darkness, what, what happens is my, my grandfather said, have you ever went to a really nice restaurant? And I'm like, like Pizza Hut, Grandpa? He's like, yeah, like Pizza Hut, Chad. And so you go inside and it's really bright, but you come inside, well, the waiting area, it's, it's not as bright, right? But then when you go in, you sit down the, for the dining experience, it is really dark. Have you ever noticed this before? You go in and it's like, you gotta get your phone out to order. You're like, I, I can't even see the menu. I've noticed this happens more after I turn 35, right? I don't know if that has anything to do with it. But, like, but it's like all of a sudden, though, your eyes begin to adjust more, don't they? Because like, at one point, like it is so dark in here. But the more you sit there, the more the room begins to kind of light up a little bit more. And you're like, oh, hey, I didn't know there's people sitting at that table. How are you doing? You know, nice, nice to see you here. It's because we are adjusting to the darkness. We are being not lured into, but we are at a spot to where now the darkness, it's not as dark as it used to be. And then what happens when you walk outside into the light? You're like, holy smokes, it's so bright out here. I can't, I can't see a thing. So at one point you were blinded by the darkness, but when you come out of the darkness, you become blinded by the light. Do you not? Don't you dare start singing this song. All right, I know, I know. Some of you are like, oh yeah, we're gonna go for it. No, no, we're not, no, we're not. And so that is the, to be lured back in, you have been called out of that darkness. And it is so tempting to want to stay in it because you begin to define your relationship by your own terms. You begin to define your relationship by your friend's terms, right? You find that one church that teaches that one thing, that one way, and you're like, well, that's what I'm going to do, right? That's what I want to believe. It makes me feel better about myself. Two weeks ago, we decided as we read through the scriptures that God is more concerned about our obedience more than he is about our happiness. And I know for some it's hard to hear, and you're like, I don't really know if I like that, Chad. Take it up with Jesus, I guess. I don't know. But for us to be Christ followers is to be different. And we talked about not weird, but to be different. And Paul, or not Paul, Peter says this, to be drawn out of that darkness into his wonderful light. And then verse 10 says this, once you are not a people, which I love that verbiage. You guys are not a people. Like, well, that's mean. But now, congratulations, you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Have, have any of you ever received mercy from Jesus? Any of you, any of you ever? Go, just put your hands up, wave around like you just don't care and find something. Look around. Everybody look around. All of us are recipients of God's mercy. How many of you at that time really deserved that mercy? Mm, nobody. How many of you at that time, that, that's the only thing that could help you was God's mercy? Anybody? Yeah. And we have all received the mercy that none of us deserve. And we need to remember this as Christ followers, right? Because as Jesus did, that's what we are to do. As Jesus lived, that's the way that we are to live. You know what John 3, uh, 17 says? You know what John three sixteen says? For God so loved the world that he gave that whosoever will not but have... And some of you are like, this is why I don't go to church. I hate participation in church. I don't like it. I don't like it. You know what 317 says? For God did not, for God did not send his son to condemn the world, but to save it. Listen, if God didn't send his own son to condemn the world, y'all need to calm down, Right? You don't have to be out there condemning everybody else and beating them down and making sure they're living the way they're supposed to be living. Now listen, there is a thing called accountability and discipleship, right? You have those relationships, you lean into them, you help people walk away from that, right? Get them out of that darkness. 
before the people that you don't know quit beating down on them. I, seriously, I mean, I talk to some of y'all, and y'all get frustrated about this stuff, and then I preach it, and you're just like, I don't know what he's talking about. I don't know. I, don't know, I think Pastor Chad's mad about something. I don't know what he's mad about, but he needs to chill out because they get me mad. I don't like that. Peter's telling us that we have been called out of darkness, and you are now a people of God. Look at verse 11. Verse 11 says this, Dear friends, I urge you. I'm going to have to read it from the screens because I've got, I've got the wrong version on here. It says this, Dear friends, I, I warn you as temporary residents and foreigners to keep away from worldly desires. Stay away from that, that wage war against your very souls. I think it is so important to be reminded that we are at a war. Like if you are a Christ follower, we are at a war with what happens naturally on this earth. A couple weeks ago, we talked about the prince of the air, right? The prince of this earth. That is Satan. That's the thing that takes place. It shouldn't catch us off guard. But when we hit that resistance, man, you continue to go against that grain, right? If you're swimming upstream, you're going to get tired. And when you get tired, you decide to turn around and to go with the flow of everything. The problem is, is we don't have necessarily a group around us to hold us accountable to continue to help us from walking into the darkness, do we? That is where some of your peer groups live the whole time. And all they want to do is, like, dude, come on, it's no big deal. Come on, don't worry about it. Don't worry, it's just come on, be a part of this. And there's nothing holy about it. There's nothing sanctified about it. And there's nothing that looks anything like Jesus. Amen? But we get drawn into this and Peter say, no, you were brought out of that darkness to be different, to live like Jesus. Verse 12 says this, be careful to live properly among your unbelieving neighbors. Now see, uh, a lot of churches take this to a whole nother extreme as if we are the ones that we are to condemn them. Quit holding people accountable that are not Christ followers to live like they're Christ followers, right? It would be great if the church could just do this within themselves, would it not? Have a little church accountability. Come on now, y'all falling asleep out there on me already. You guys are just waiting to go eat, aren't you? We're gonna go eat. We're gonna watch Cowboys play. We're gonna have a good time. All right. Hey, listen, I have to throw that out there and I hate to take a break in the middle of the sermon, but there's some hateful people that go to this church, okay? And uh, one of them texted me last week and said, hey, preacher, it seemed like you didn't pray for the Cowboys on Sunday. <laughs> it was their first loss and I didn't pray for them from stage. So guess what that means from now on? That's right, we're all praying for the Cowboys. Amen? Hey, all right, back to Peter. I'm sorry, I apologize. But <laughs> the reason I thought of the Cowboys is because it says unbelieving neighbors, okay? Hey, that makes you happy, doesn't it? Okay, all right, yeah. We them boys. Anyways, it says this. Then even if they accuse you, watch this, of you doing wrong, they will see your honorable behavior. Have you ever known those people that you're just like, I want to be so mad at them, but I just can't. I just can't be mad at them. Like, oh, they're just so cute. They've got the squishy cheeks, the squishy cheeks, right? Like, like, you know, you just, but it's like, even like, like they get on your nerves and you're like, what is wrong with them? And all of a sudden you're like, well, they're not really that bad. You know, and all of a sudden God's like, well, maybe it's you. Like, no, that can't be it. It definitely can't be it. Maybe it's my wife. It has to be my, my wife. I don't know. But it's, it's, that's what Peter's saying is live in a way that your unbelieving neighbors are like, bro, I don't believe in your Lord. I don't believe in your God. But I sure wouldn't mind for your son to date my daughter. I sure wouldn't mind for your daughter to date my son. I sure would love to hire you as, to come and work for me because you live differently as a Christ follower. Even though I don't believe in your Christ, even though I don't do that, you guys are great. That, that, people should be begging me like, hey, man, do you have any people that, that need to come and work? You know what most people say? Like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, like seriously, when we, when we were in, I was doing student ministry, we would go to an event called Extreme Winter down in Branson. And the hotels hated it. You know why? Because uh, all the Christians come together and they tear up their property. They said, we have more beds broken. We have more pictures torn up. We have things uh, missing from our hotel rooms. And this was the representation of Jesus. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. And then you go stand in line and you're trying to wait and be civil. And then you always get that one guy, that one guy who's gotta like come through and elbow everybody to get through. And then you gotta be the guy to set that guy straight, don't you, right? 
No, just me? Okay, anyway. And so, like, like that, that, we're supposed to be the representation of Jesus. You get caught in that moment. I get caught in that moment. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh, I better calm down, right? <laughs> I am a Christ follower, and I better be careful. And I, 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 I pastor a few people at Springfield. I got to I gotta chill out. And do, do y'all catch yourself like that? I mean, not the pastoring part, but you're like, man, I, I, that, whew, that escalated quickly. Did it not? And there's what Peter is saying is your neighbors, they should be like, man, that's, that's an honorable person. My, my neighbor's a great guy. Don't believe the way that she does. Don't believe the way that he does. But they're great people. That's not what is said often about the church. But if the church could get it right, it could change everything. The end of verse 12 says this. And they will give honor, this is why, to God when he judges the world. Peter was not worried about convincing them to believe what he believes. Peter was worried about living out a way that they begin to see what you believe, right? If we could get this red tree, if we could get this, it'll change Springfield. But, I mean, it'll change Springfield so much that some of y'all be so mad because it's going to take so long to get out of the parking space, right? That's a good church to go to, isn't it? So many people coming and hearing about Jesus, I can't get out of here fast enough. Bah, 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 right? Like, that, that's a great problem to have, isn't it? Have you ever went to a football game and it took you a little while to get out of the stadium? Yeah. You ever been to a baseball game and it took you a little bit to get out of the traffic, right? This is why you leave at the eighth inning, right? Yeah. Don't you leave before we take up the offering because now we know. All right. We know you just want to get out of it. But Peter is telling them in the way that you and I live should show them Jesus. But a lot of times we don't get that. Right. A lot of times the church is known for other things. The church is known for no longer being relevant. The church is known for only, only caring about those people that go to that one location. And this is what I love about Red Tree. From our second year, we have done everything we can to prove that we only exist to honor God. Now we started that way and finances has always been tight. And you guys hear me talk about this often. But when we started the give it away plan, the, the give it away program, it was for the purpose to continue to remind all of us that God is the one in control, amen? God is the only one who can continue to supply our needs. And if I'm asking you guys to live that way, then you better believe that Red Tree Church and its lead pastor better live that way, amen? That's right, if we can change hypocrisy, let's change it real quick and let's change it right now. Peter says when we live in a way People will see. I remember when we decided we're going to start giving to AIDS Project of the Ozarks. We had a couple people get mad about that. They got, they got mad at Red Tree. You guys are going to give to the AIDS Project of the Ozarks? Yep. Yeah. I don't think I want to do that anymore. I said, you want your money back? You just going to give my money back? If you're not happy with it, we'll get you your money back. But what we believe is God's call us to love all people. We even give to Christian organizations. <laughs> some of you are like, what? Hey, listen, some of the hardest people to love are those who say they follow Christ. Some of you, your, your, your relationship with Jesus is so jaded and it's kind of been derailed because of other Christ followers. If we can just be that honest. Because you always thought Christ followers should be different. For some of you, it was, it was a home that you grew up in in the environment where you see dad worship on Sunday morning or maybe dad's a deacon or mom serves at the church and, and you grew up as a kid and you're just like, oh, man, we come home and it's like, Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. But we go to church and it's like, how great is our God? And what is that about? There's nothing different about us. And now you're really truly trying to figure out faith. And you're like, well, the church just wants our money. Nope, not this one. Well, the church is just concer concerned about what I'll do. Nope, not this one. See, we're, we're more excited about what God wants to do for you and through you than what we are, what you have to, be, to give to him. But let me tell you this, to follow Jesus, sometimes you're gonna sacrifice some things. Uh, come on now. To follow Jesus, you will have to sacrifice things. Some of it's gonna be friends, some of it's gonna be finances, it's gonna be that job, that dream school. 
maybe the relationship that you're really trying to make happen and you're just like, I really need you to get saved because I'm not supposed to date you if you're not. And so you're doing missional dating is what that is. Like, I'm going to bring them to Jesus. No, you're not as long as you keep sleeping with them. Sorry. Too much, huh? When we begin to follow Jesus, we surrender everything. And we follow him with everything. No more segmented lives. But we say, okay, Lord, I need you. I don't know how I'm going to get through this. Sometimes those situations come so that you'll turn. Sometimes those situations come and God goes, hey, hey, are you paying attention here? Sometimes things happen and we can't explain it away. We can't make sense of it. But the one thing that we do know is that Jesus loves you. Jesus loves me at all times. And when Peter is saying, listen, we've been called out of this darkness. You, you, at one time you didn't know Jesus, you were brought away from that. Now as you lean into Jesus and grow, you begin to look more like him. You fully surrender to him. Verse 21 says, for God called you to do good, even if it means suffering. You're like, what? Even if it means suffering, just as Christ suffered for you, he is your example. Jesus was never proud. He was never arrogant. He's never conceited. He wasn't around just trying to defend himself the whole time. He wasn't hateful. This is what Jesus was about. He never sinned nor ever deceived anyone. He did not retaliate when he was insulted nor threatened revenge when he suffered. He left his case in the hands of God who always judges fairly. He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. What a beautiful verse. So that we can be dead to sin and begin to live for what is right. Last verse is this. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, is we're trying to live different. We're trying to focus, God, what it is that you want, not just from me, but for me. Peter says this, don't repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, pay them back with a blessing. Like, nope, we ain't gonna do that. Yeah, you are, it's different. Like, no, that's just, that's, that's ignorant. No, it's not. That's different. You wanna live for Jesus? You wanna follow Jesus? Remember about a month ago, we talked about when he says, hey, when you're told to go one mile, to go two, when someone asks for your shirt, you give them your jacket, right? This is different. Jesus flipped it all on its head. And the religious people are the ones that got mad about it. Careful, careful. To follow Jesus means to live differently. He goes on and says, that is what God has called you to do. And he will grant you his blessings. I want everybody to bow your head and close your eyes. I want to give you an opportunity to respond back. I don't know where you are with faith. Maybe you're on the outside of it, kind of looking in and just trying to figure some things out. Maybe you're the person that I talked about that said, man, my faith has been impacted by other Christ followers that I don't even really know where to begin. Wherever you may be, I, I want to give you an opportunity just where you are to just pray and to ask God to reveal to you where you may be with him. For some of you, you may be at that spot that you have been called out of darkness, but you have wandered back into it. And you need to confess that sin to a holy God. For some of you, you've never asked Jesus to become your Lord and your savior. You've never surrendered your life to him. Maybe you've said many prayers. Maybe you've been baptized. Maybe you've been through different classes. But you know, really, you have never surrendered your life. You've never asked Jesus to be your Lord and to be your Savior, to be your boss. And so this morning, you need to do that. You need to begin that relationship with him. Not to just know about him, not to just be 
more intellectually driven about faith, but to pursue faith that Jesus has for you. If you're here this morning and you need to begin a relationship with Jesus, I would love for you to repeat this after me. You can say it out loud or you can say it in your head, whatever it is you'd like to do. But this morning, if you wanna begin that relationship, say something like this. Dear Jesus, come into my life and make me yours. Forgive me of all of my sins. Help my doubts, help my fears, help my unbeliefs. You know where I am and I need you. Help me to follow you from this day forward. It's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you said that prayer this morning and you've asked Jesus to become your Lord and your savior, would you do me a favor? Would you just slip your hand up real quick and put it back down? Amen, thank you, you can put it down. Anybody else? Let me just say, Jesus is now my Lord. Jesus is my savior. Anybody else? Just put it up, put it back down. Father, thank you for who you are. Lord, for those of us who are here this morning that we are Christ followers, but Lord, we know there's so many areas in our lives uh, that we just, we fail. And more than that, it's not just a mistake, it's a, it's a sin. And we know to be different. And we fight through your conviction, we fight through the Holy Spirit, and we do what we want anyways. God, that is a sin that we need to confess to you. So Lord, for those of us that may be here, if that's taking place, God, I pray that that happens at this time. Lord, give us the strength to be obedient, to pursue you daily. That that relationship changes who we are. And we begin to live in a way that's not self-seeking, self-gratification, but people begin to see you through us, the way that we respond, the way that we lead, the way that we do things, God, that you become known. Lord, for those who are still here, that maybe they're not beginning a relationship with you. Maybe they're still trying to figure some things out. God, I pray that Red Tree would be a church that would come alongside and love on them and answer questions and walk with them in that process. And that God, we would just turn it straight to you. Lord, for the individual who raised their hand and said, today, Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. I pray this will be a moment that they never forget and that we would come alongside and to help disciple and to help them understand what it is to follow you. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. We just wanted to give a huge thank you to those of you that already partner with us through giving. And we've got multiple resources for you to utilize from to do that. You can give online, you can text the number 84321, or you can download our Church Center app. Again, thank you so much for listening today and we'll see you next time.